What is up everybody, Steve Daria here. I love vacation rental properties. I think that they are just a cool investment as long as you buy right. And uh, you know, who, who doesn't want an investment property that they can cash flow and they can use themselves or you know, allow their family and friends to use it as well. So, but today I wanna to talk about five lies associated with vacation rental investment properties. The first lie is they're too expensive. Now, there's a lot of caveats associated with this and I've heard this from other people and read other blogs about it that they're just crazy expensive. And you know, I think it depends on the market that you're investing in for one thing. You know, if you are in a beach market or let's say you're in the mountains where it's a ski in, ski out kind of cabin, yes, those values could be higher. But I also want to address that it depends on the market cycle that you're in and you're purchasing. So prime example, we bought um, four properties here locally in Bonita Beach and uh, three of them were actually at the Beach and Tennis Club. One I picked up, the first one I picked up in there at the time, this is when the mar real estate market dipped down. Uh, I picked that up for 155000 The second one we picked up uh, for 165000 which we still have. Uh, the third one I picked up for 175000 um, you know, the first two I ended up flipping after, after some years of ownership of those properties. And another property that I picked up fairly cheap, fairly inexpensive that I thought was a duplex on the backwater across the street from the beach on Fort Myers Beach. And I picked up that for, I think, 310000 That same property could probably fetch in 2020, 2021 market, probably about seven fifty eight hundred thousand. dollars 800000 So it just depends on what market you're currently in. Depending on where you're at in the real estate cycle, you can still get good deals on vacation rental investment properties in prime locations. The second lie is you can't just buy a vacation rental investment property anywhere. And I think that that's kind of far from the truth because it's already been proven with sites like Airbnb. And you know, the biggest thing is people want an experience. And even if let's say you're in a small town and you can get creative with some sort of like vacation property um, in your small town, you can still make money in this kind of uh, realm with investing in this kind of property. So you can get creative and I've seen other small towns where people literally uh, created uh, tree houses. People have created tents uh, in their backyard. Um, I've seen RVs for rent. I've seen boats for rent. So there's a lot of different things that you can do that's inside your town or maybe outside your town to give somebody an experience who might not necessarily have the money or the funds to travel to another state or another country, but they want a different experience in, in or around their hometown. The next lie, and I want to say it's almost like a fear tactic or unexpected expenses. Look, in any kind of investment property, you're going to have certain risks associated with it. Actually, you're going to have certain risks associated with buying any kind of investment in itself. But if you're doing the right things from the beginning with your investment property, and, and taking care of any deferred maintenance and making sure that certain things are, are completed, then you're not gonna have to necessarily worry about anything. So let's say, for example, you have a water heater that's on its last leg. You might wanna go ahead and replace that water heater before you start renting it out because you don't wanna get that phone call at four in the morning that the place is flooded out because of the water heater. So as, an, as a real estate investor, you wanna take um, you want to be proactive in terms of being able to provide a good product to somebody and also being pro proactive on any kind of deferred or foreseeable maintenance issues. Also, you want to budget for certain maintenance issues. If you're on the last leg of uh, an AC unit, maybe you should change that out now. Or if you're not interested in doing that, make sure you have that money stacked away. This way it's not a big shocker to you when your AC doesn't work out and people are sweating. And another thing too is people get all bent out of shape because, you know, certain things broke or certain, um, you know, uh, uh, furniture has wear and tear. And, you know, if you don't, you have to budget for those items, those replacement items, because yes, if you have you know, a three day minimum rental and you are actively renting that property out, it's getting used a lot. And yes, you guys are gonna have to budget for maybe a new couch, a new table, new chairs, 
uh, new new dishes in the di in the uh, kitchen. So as long as you guys are budgeting accordingly, you're, a lot of these surprises and fear are going to dissipate because you have allocated the necessary funds to take care of these items. The next lie about vacation rental investment properties is they don't cash flow. Look, there's a chance that they might not cash flow. But it depends on running the numbers. It depends on where, how much you paid for the property and the costs associated with that property. And if you are taking debt, you know all the factors associated with your debt position on it as well. So it is important that you guys are being uh, preventative in terms of not getting yourself into a, an asset that you think is going to cash flow and it doesn't. But I think that's one lie that's put out there that they just don't make money because realistically if they're managed correctly and it's a good product and you're doing all the things that you should be doing to maximize revenue which i got another video on that too for you guys you guys will end up cash flowing the property as long as you meet all those certain criterias and the last lie about vacation rental investing is they're time consuming you know what <laughs> initially i did take care of our own and it was a pain in the ass wasn't necessarily time consuming it was just more of a pain in the ass and I think that a lot of people are fearful of that where it's gonna to take too much time out of their day or whatever the case is or they're busy with another job look a couple factors you can hire a vacation rental uh, company to handle that on your behalf and pay them 15 18 20 percent depending on where the property is located and handle all that for you and have um, monthly money just dropped into your bank account every month and keep it very simple however if you're managing some of your own properties you know as long as you have two key companies and you might want to have backups of each as well but you got to have a good cleaner who's going to keep an eye out for your property, especially for deferred maintenance, anything that comes up, you want to train this person, um, particularly to keep an eye out for anything that's missing or broken or needs to be addressed or fixed. And then a good handyman. So when that, when that cleaner is there, and you can do this from afar, when that cleaner is in there, and let's say one of these chairs are, are wobbling or they're weak or whatever the case is, that cleaner can contact the handyman directly you have a good relationship with that handyman and you trust this handyman or handymen then you go ahead or women then you go ahead and they hire or they send a work order to the handyman to go come out and fix that chair and then invoice you directly and it's basically a, a good system a good time saving system that you can create on your own and it's not necessarily going to be time consuming for you as long as you set up the appropriate foundation with the right people in place. Below I got a couple of videos. One is pros and cons about vacation rental investing and also another one if you currently have a vacation rental investment property, how to maximize revenue. So check out those videos next and I appreciate being here. Thanks a lot.